Welcome to CAT tutorials and in this video I'll be covering practice problem 6.7. Now this question as it is is asking us to find the voltage across each capacitor as it is labeled V1, V2, V3 and V4. So you can view first of all here are okay let's start with a few formulas Q is equal to CV and I is used to dq divided by dt. I was just about to say you can view charge as current in terms of capacitors and since the addition of capacitors is the inverse of the combination of resistors then this also works in terms of <coughs> excuse me in terms of how you'd view the charge as it goes around the circuit. So if you combine this part and bring it all the way to this point and only have two capacitors, then the charge is the same across the whole circuit because this and that will be in series, right? And that is what is gonna help us to find the voltages using this formula. So taking this formula, and just dividing by C on both sides, we're going to say V is equal to Q divided by C. So this is the main formula which we're going to use to find the voltages across each capacitor. So now let's proceed to find the total. As we said that the, the charge we actually viewed as the current. So let's proceed to find the total charge which goes in that direction or which is supplied to the rest of the circuit, right? So to do that, we'll combine all of this into either a single, uh, a single, what's this, a single capacitance or, yeah, that's the best way. So let's combine all of this into a single capacitance. And after that, we are going to proceed to find the charge. So let's start. On this side, you see that this, these two um, capacitors are in series, which means we apply this formula, which says, 60 multiplied by 30 divided by 60 plus 30 which is 90 and cancel that you have three there you have one there and this into that is 20 so this is 20 microfarads which is the combination of these two right and now here we also have 20 microfarads now this 20 microfarads is now in parallel with the combination of these, which is 20. And parallel capacitances, we add them up. So 20 plus 20 will be 40. So which means we have 40 over here. And the 40, which is originally in the question, and everything else remains the same. So this is what we now have. And as you know by now, if you combine using this formula for parallel resistors, if you combine values using this formula, which multiplies the values and add them and adds them up at the bottom, you will get the results of half of those values. So which means we already know that doing this formula for 40 and 40 would lead us to 20 microfarads, which means the, the equivalent of these two are the equivalent of the whole circuit boils down to only 20 microfarads and that is what we have there now we can proceed to find the total charge i'm just going to use uh, qt just to show the total charge so qt is equals to c v so c we found that to be 20 micro and v is 60 as given in the question so let's multiply by that will give you the total charge of since this is 10 to the 6, and we have that, and it's going to multiply and add another 0, and stuff like that is going to happen, or you can just simply punch this into your calculator, then your answer is going to be 1.2 times 10 to the minus 3 coulombs. This is the total charge which is supplied to the rest of the circuit. Now that we have this information, we can proceed to find the voltages. So first, first thing, since this is the source and this total charge encounters this 40 first because they're in series. So we can start with V1 by saying V1 using this formula, which says Q divided by C. Since this total Q is leaving this point, as you can view it as a current, then this total is going to be used in this formula, Q divided by C. 
So that is what we have for V1 divided by a C of 40 micro, which is 10 times that. And the answer to this is simply, um, let's see, let's see, let's see, let's just punch that into your calculator quickly. So we don't make any mistakes. So during that, we have 40 times 10 to the minus six. And the answer to this is 30, okay? Just didn't want to mess up the decimal signs or whatever decimal points meant to say. So the value of that is 30 volts. This is for this V1 over here. Now I'll move on to this side of the circuit. Now that this total charge of 1.2 reaches this junction, as we viewed as a current, it reaches this junction over here. And when it reaches this junction, it's going to split into that side and this side. Now the combination of these two be found to be. 20 microfarads, so you can just redraw this. So this is the first part of the circuit, which I'm not gonna draw. And this is the other side of the circuit, which has V2, which is 20 microfarads. And on this side, we have the combination of the 60 and the 30, which is also 20 microfarads. And now that this total charge, this QT, which we calculated earlier, is reaching this point, it's going to divide into that point and that point as we view the charge as current to capacitors in a, in a way. So since these two values are equal, then you expect the division to be equal as well. So each side will receive a charge of half the total charge. So the charge which goes there is half, the charge which goes there is half. And we found that the total charge is 1.2, which means half of 1.2 is 0 0.6 times 10 to the minus 3 coulombs. Right? That is that. So now we know that this is half of QT and this is half of QT as well. So we can proceed to find the other values. So V2, which is over here, V2, Q divided by C. And our Q, we just found to be half of QT, which is our 0 0.6 times 10 to the minus 3, divided by 20 microfarads, which is the value of the capacitor where V2 is indicated. And the answer to that should be, so doing that quickly, let's see, let's see, let's see. Just don't want to make any mistakes, that's why we're using calculator. So the answer to that is 30 as well. 30 volts. Now moving on to V3. Now since this this QT divided by 2 is for all of this side and these two are in series then this is the same current which actually flows through each of them so that we can just uh, plug all of that into the formula Q divided by C. So Q for V3 is 60 uh, sorry Q is 0 0.6 times 10 to the minus 3 and the C is 60 microfarads. And the same thing applies to V4. We have a Q of 0 0.6. And we have a C of 30 microfarads. And from this, we can basically find the values of both of those. So V3 will be 10 volts. And this V4 will be 20 volts. So now, at the end, we found our values to be V1 is equal to 30 volts. V2 is equal to 30 volts as well. V3 is equal to 10 volts. And finally, V4 is 20 volts. And that is how you solve this problem.